They say a picture is worth a thousand words. And the Lord, being the greatest teacher the world has ever known, really knew how to take a word picture to convey deep and meaningful truths. For example, when we think of the Christian life, there are a variety of analogies used to help us gain a better understanding. Some of them we find in the Bible would be that of a farmer, and that's analogous to living this life as we uh, sow, we can then reap, and, and God teaches us so much through that. The Bible uses the analogy of being a construction worker to help us understand serving the Lord. The Bible speaks of being a fisherman in relationship to sharing our faith, and at times the Bible even speaks of us as being an athlete and running a race in the course of our lives. But, but there's one analogy that I want to talk about today that I think does a great job of helping us not only understand what it is we're supposed to do in our life, but it helps us to understand who we are in the course of life. And it's the beautiful word picture we find in the Bible that helps us as Christians to understand that we are warriors. We're warriors. Now, we clearly know we are not in a physical fight with this world. We're to be peaceful people. But we had better know that there is an all-out war being waged spiritually speaking, and we have been called by God to be a warrior for Him. Paul, to help us understand this, wrote in Ephesians 6, he said, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So there is a war being fought, but the great news for us is this, the outcome has already been determined. Jesus is victorious, and in Him we are as well. Yet as we live this life knowing that the victory is certain in Christ, He still calls us to be faithful as warriors to Him. Paul addressed this topic in the letter he wrote to the church of Corinth. And I want you to listen to his words in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. He said, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the savor of His knowledge by us in every place. Now, in these words, we learn some things about what it means exactly to be a warrior for Christ. The first element we find in this text helps us to see the attitude of a warrior. Uh, the overall attitude of Paul here was one of gratefulness. He, he, he spoke of God, which causeth us to triumph in Christ. Now, the contrarian could hear that and say, Now, wait a minute, Paul didn't always triumph. And to be sure, he had his difficulties. He had his uh, moments where he was beaten and shipwrecked and all that he went through. But you see, for Paul, his joy was not just found in the impact that his labor produced. It was found in knowing the one for whom it was all being done. Paul could view every situation in his life and say, man, I get to do this for the Lord. He was overjoyed at the reality of that. It was always about the Lord, and in the end, he knew God would always work it out. You know, there are a lot of times where we feel as though we're not getting the victory when God has a way of using it all for our good and His glory. I remember speaking out of state some time ago, and uh, I was excited to go and preach. I believed I had the message God wanted me to bring. I did my best to deliver it, but it was just one of those nights where I didn't feel like it came out as good as I wanted it to. I didn't spend an awful lot of time thinking about it, but I do remember thinking as I left, man, I wish I'd have done a little better job tonight. Well, a few days went by. I was home now, and the pastor of that church called me, and he said, Steve, your message really helped our church. And, uh, of course, I was glad to hear that. He said, there's one family in particular. He said, you're not going to believe this. Uh, they came in. I just had a meeting with them, and they said they watched your sermon five more times online since you've been gone. Furthermore, they said God's been working on their heart so much and convicting them. He said they just brought a check in to make up for giving. They said they, they've known better than they've been doing, and they wanted to uh, do that. And, and uh, I heard all of that, and I thought, how amazing is it that I would have left that night and thought, you know, maybe not as much good happened here as I would have expected, yet to find out that God was working behind the scenes, touching hearts, in lives. We are not the ones always to determine a win or a loss in the course of life. We just want to be faithful to the Lord, do what He would have us to do, knowing it is His work. So we see the attitude of a warrior, but we see also here the acceptance of a warrior. If you are a Christian, you are now and forever will be accepted in Jesus Christ. 
You have to accept your acceptance. Uh, Paul to the believers in Ephesus said this, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Friends, we have to accept it and receive it so that we can then live in it. If you accept that you are accepted, it changes everything. It will call uh, you to, to a life that makes an incredible, incredible difference. And if you don't accept that you're accepted, invariably you will live as though you are rejected, like you have something to prove. And a faithful warrior has to find their place in a position that only Jesus can give. We have nothing to prove in terms of trying to gain acceptance from God. He's predetermined for people of faith. We are triumphant. We are victorious in Him. And that leads to the final thought that we find in this verse. We see the actions of a warrior. Now, when we accept that we are accepted, I said that will call us to some things in life. Invariably, it calls us to action. When you know you're serving Jesus, you're on the winning side, you're going to want to get in on that victory, and you're going to serve Him with your life. And the word picture here is incredible. It closes by saying this, And maketh manifest the savor of His knowledge by us, in every place. Now let me frame this. Paul had already established in this verse that we are triumphant in Christ. Now that word has meaning, but in this culture in which Paul was writing, it would have had a bigger sense of understanding. For in this time, had you been declared triumphant, that would have meant some things. That would have meant that you would have a parade coming into the city of Rome because you were triumphant. You would have been in a chariot that was elaborately decorated and it would have been pulled by animals. Many times the animals would have been uh, animals that represented what was thought of in terms of your character. I'll give you an example. When Mark Anthony was declared triumphant and rode in his decorated chariot into Rome, he was pulled by lions. When Marcus Aurelius was declared as triumphant, he came into Rome and he was pulled by deer. Now, I want you to think with that in mind what Jesus says here. Jesus says that he makes us to show forth the fragrance of the knowledge of Christ. It's by us. And furthermore, he says that we who are the carriers of this good news get to do this in every place. Think of this. If you are a person of faith, you've been made victorious by Jesus Christ. You're victorious in Jesus Christ. And His grace allows us to share the news with others about the victory that is only found in Him. This is an honor that's unbelievable to think that the Lord allows us as His triumphant ones to declare the message of the gospel. What an honor is given to us by the Lord. Imagine the impact our lives would have if we would begin to comprehend just really how blessed we are in Christ. We have not been saved to sit. We've been saved to serve. And someone who understands what it is to be triumphant in Jesus Christ is just so thrilled with the joy that we get to tell others about the Lord. I, I hope today that your attitude, your sense of acceptance, and that your actions would all be based on your understanding of who Christ says that we are in Him. Paul wrote to Timothy, and as he did, he said this, he said, Timothy, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. My prayer today is that for those of us that know Jesus, we would live as the mighty and victorious warriors that he's called us to be.